And the revived people of God said, If you're still awake, I said, If you're still awake, somebody there, I am not tired. What are you? Give us a great amen. You are strong. You will be stronger and stronger. Wiser and wiser. The Lord is going to make a giant out of you. A champion out of you. The Lord confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your revelation. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you because you have taken hold of us to serve you. We will serve you. And we will serve rewardably in Jesus' name. Our service will be profitable to the kingdom of God. I'll be rewarded mightily, abundantly when we see you in glory in Jesus' name. Thank you for the joy in the heart of your people. Keep them strong in that joy. In Jesus' name we pray. We're coming to Romans chapter 8. While the previous chapter, chapter 7, concerns the struggling man, this chapter celebrates the spiritual member of the body of Christ. As we look at this chapter, we see the place of Christ, the position of Christ, the prayer of Christ. As we look at this chapter, we see the presence of the Holy Spirit, the prominence of the Holy Spirit, the prevalence of the Holy Spirit. Look at this. We're looking at this chapter, Romans chapter 8. And we're looking at the place and the position and the prayer of Christ. Look at it in verse 1. And as we read, notice where Christ appears. Our Savior appears. Our Redeemer appears. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 2. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free. Look at verse 3. For what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh look at verse 9 but she had not in the flesh but in the spirit if so be that the spirit of god dwelleth dwell in you now if any man does not have the spirit of christ is none of his verse 10 and if christ be in you the body is dead because of sin. Look at verse 11. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit, by spirit that dwelleth in you. Look at verse, look at verse 17. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Look at uh, verse uh, 29. In verse 29, uh, it's telling us, For whom he did for no, he also predestined uh, to be conformed uh, to the image of a son, that he might be the first among many brethren. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Verse 34, who is he that condemned It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who he who also maketh intercession for us. Now in verse 35, 
it says in verse 35, we shall separate us from the love of Christ. And then verse 39, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. As we look through the chapter, Christ, 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 Jesus Christ, our Savior is right there. And the man we're reading about in this chapter is not the struggling man, it's the spiritual man. He's the one that has Christ in him. In this chapter, in the other chapter I told you, we don't have the mention of the Holy Spirit there. But look at this chapter, the Holy Spirit is here. And thank God you are in this chapter 8. Your picture is here. Your life is here. Power energized life by the Holy Ghost. I pray that that spirit will be prominent in your life. Preeminent in your life. Prevalent in your life. Present in your life in Jesus name. Look at the chapter and see the spirit. Capital S. From verse 1. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Look at verse 2. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Look at verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Look at verse 5. For they that are in the flesh do not do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, come to verse 9. For ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Now, if any man hath not the Spirit of Christ, is none of his. And then in verse 10, and if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Look at verse 11. Keep the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the spirit, by the spirit that dwelleth in you. In verse 13, it tells us in verse 13, for if ye live after the flesh, it shall die. But if ye live through the spirit, I do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Verse 16, the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. In verse 23, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to which the redemption of the body. And then in verse 26, likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Verse 27, and he that searches the heart knoweth what the mind of the what is the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Here is a chapter that is filled with the mention of Christ, a Savior, a Redeemer, a Sanctifier, the Purifier of our life. Here is a chapter that is filled with the mention of the Spirit of God. Here is the believer now being presented, introduced to us, a liberated man, a delivered man, a regenerated man, a renewed man, a refreshed man, a person indwelt by the Holy Spirit is quickened, he is striving, he is assured, he is enabled by the Spirit. This is not the slave of the previous chapter. This is a son adopted, approved, accepted, acknowledged by the Savior, a joint heir with Christ, Christ the only begotten of the Father. Here is the chapter then that talks about the victory of the spirit-controlled life. 
the victory of the spirit controlled life. We're dividing the chapter into three parts. Number one, our freedom and victory through the indwelling spirit. Our freedom and victory through the indwelling spirit. Number two, the fervency and vehemence of inexpressible supplication. The fervency and vehemence of inexpressible supplication. Number three, the faithfulness and virtue of inseparable saints. The faithfulness and virtue of inseparable saints. Let's look at number one, a freedom and victory through the indwelling spirit. Here we're reading from verses 1 to 17. Verses 1 to 17. First, it talks about free sons walking in the spirit. Sons of God. Sons in the family of God. Sons, those who have believed on the Lord. And now they are sons of God. Free sons walking in the spirit. This section also talks about fleshly sinners without the spirit. Fleshless sinners without the spirit. And then before you get to verse 17, faithful saints indwelt by the spirit. Faithful saints indwelt by the spirit. Look at verses 1 to 4. Romans chapter 8, verses 1 to 4. Free sons walking in the spirit. There is therefore now no condemnation to them, which are in Christ Jesus, who walk after them, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You see, the tone has changed. The understanding has changed. The experience has changed. This is a man now is not saying, you know, sin dwelleth in me. What I try to do, I cannot achieve. What I hate that I do. No, this one is not walking after the flesh. This one is after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do. In that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. It's a person set free. And because he's set free, now he can manifest the fruit of the spirit. Galatians chapter 5. In Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 1, Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Look at verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit. And ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. Look at verse 22. For the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lusts. Free sons walking in the spirit. Come back to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 is saying that if we're children of God, if we're born again, if we're out of the wilderness and the jungle of the Mosaic law, now we come to the mountain top of the light of the gospel. And the Spirit of God is in us. We're no more walking after the flesh. I there some people still walking after the flesh. Look at verse 5. It's the second part. Fleshless sinners without the Spirit. Fleshless sinners without the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They are not born again. But they that are after the Spirit... The things of the Spirit, those are born again people. In verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, not born again, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. 
children of God. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can be. Those are sinners. So then, they that, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man, now, if any woman, now, if any religious person, now, if any Jew, now, if any Gentile, now, if any bishop, now, if any overseer, now, if any pastor, now, if any mother, now, if any daughter, now, if any child, have not the spirit of Christ, is none of his. Those are fleshly sinners, and they are without the Spirit. Jude tells us about them, and he tells us about their characteristics in Jude chapter 1. Jude chapter 1, reading from verse 15. Jude chapter 1, reading from verse 15. To execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly, among them of all the ungodly of the uh, ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and to all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him you see jude is talking about the people who have not tasted of calvary they have not tasted of the grace of god they have not tasted of the power of the new life they have not tasted of the presence of the spirit but 16 these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own laws. And their mouths speaketh great swelling words. He says, have been made persons in admiration because of advantage. But, dearly beloved, remember ye the words that were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How they told you that there should be mockers in the last time. Who should walk after their own ungodly laws? These be they. Look at this. Who separate themselves? Sensual. Tell me the rest. Tell me out loud. Not having the spirit. That's why they're fleshly. That's why they lost. That's why they cannot overcome sin. That's why they're not members of the family of God. Not having the spirit come back to romans chapter 8 faithful saints indwelt by the spirit faithful saints indwelt by the spirit we're reading from verse 10 and if christ be in you the body is dead because of sin and the spirit is alive because of righteousness and it says but if the spirit of him the trace of Jesus from the dead dwell in you. You see, this is different from chapter 7. No good thing dwelleth in me. Sin dwelleth in me. That's why I couldn't do what I wanted to do. But here now, it says, the Spirit dwells in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by a Spirit that dwelleth in you. I pray that Spirit be powerful, mightily present in your heart in Jesus' name. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, if we are brethren, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live, if through the Spirit, you do modify, you modify the deeds of the body, you shall live for as many as alleged by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. They are not led by tradition. They are led by the Spirit of God. They are not led by personal opinion. They are led by the Spirit of God. They are not led by old women's fables. They are led by the Spirit of God. They are not led by a rebellious heart. They are led by the Spirit of God. They are not led by the elders of opinion. They are led by the Spirit of God. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye, for ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, crying whereby we cry, Abba, Father. And the Spirit beareth witness with our spirit 
that we are the children of God. Each child, and each children were heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Christ sets us free from the bondage of sin, and he lives in us to keep us free, granting us grace granting us divine enablement to live in righteousness. The natural man, the carnal man is earthly. The carnal man, the natural man is devoid of grace and empty of the divine nature. And he does not desire to please God and he cannot please God. But the true child of God desires to please him and delights in pleasing his heavenly father and is devoted to daily pleasing the Lord. It tells us that this child of God, in whom the Spirit of God dwells, is a different kind of person. Look at him here in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ seated on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above. Not on things on the earth, for ye are dead, and your life is sealed with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then it says, Then shall ye also appear with him in glory in Jesus' name. We shall, we shall be with him. I said, We shall be with him. We shall see him as he is. The Spirit that dwells within us. And because he dwells within us, we are victorious. You will be victorious in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8 from verse 18, point number 2. The fervency and the vehemence of inexpressible supplication. Inexpressible supplication. We are looking at Romans chapter 8 and we are reading from verse 18. I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the scripture itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Verse 22, For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption that is to wit, the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. But what a man, for what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for, for that? But if we hope for that, we see not. Then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. And then he goes on to say, For we know not what we shall pray for, but for as we ought. But the Spirit maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. All things will work together for good in your life in Jesus' name. Now, as you look at this section, you are wondering, what's this section all about? It's looking at the present. It's looking at the future. It's looking at the past. It's looking at what brought us to where we are. It's talking about the whole of humanity. 
It's not talking about believers alone. It's talking about everyone in the universe. It's even talking about the animal kingdom. Everyone. And it's saying, we are groaning. Look at some verses here. These verses talk about the glory which shall be revealed. Verse 18. For I reckon that the suffering of the present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. He's talking about the future there. And then he talks about the glorious liberty of the children of God. Look at verse 21. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. He's talking about the glory which is to come. He talks about a kind of adoption and he says he's talking about the redemption of our body. Now our souls are redeemed. Now our spirits are redeemed. Now the inner man is saved, regenerated, redeemed, and restored unto, the, unto favor with God. But he's saying our body, our body, sometimes will be tired, sometimes will be sick, and eventually before the rapture, will experience death. But then the time is coming, which will be the redemption of the body. Look at verse 23. It says, and not only they, but we ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves. It says we are waiting for the adoption to which the redemption of our body. It says at that time, there will be a great manifestation. The manifestation of the sons of God. Look at verse 19. For the next expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. He's saying at present the whole creation is groaning. The whole creation is traveling for the glorious future. We wait patiently in the comforting hope that that will happen. As, as the spirit intercedes for us, we know that all things work together for good to them who love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. In this section, he talks about three things. Number one, the anticipation of future glory. The anticipation of future glory. And let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4. The anticipation of future glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 16. It says, For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan at the present time honestly desiring to be closed upon with our house which is from heaven if so be that being closed we shall not be found naked for we that are in this tab tabernacle do groan in the present hour being body not for that we would be unclothed but closed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life now he that has wrought in us. For us, the self same thing is God, who also has given us the earnest of the Spirit. He's talking about our anticipation for future glory. Number two, the agony of the present groaning. The agony of the present groaning. He says, we're groaning now. Why are we groaning? Because will be subjected to some conditions here on earth. How did those conditions start? Look at this in Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3 verse 17. 
And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened to the voice of thy wife, and as eating of the fruit of the which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cause said is the ground for thy sake. That's how we are groaning, because even though we are saved, the ground sometimes does not bring forth the proper fruit. Even the animal kingdom, they are all groaning, because the curse came upon them after Adam sinned. And it says in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. That's still there. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field in the sweat of thy face. Shalt thou eat bread till thou return to the ground. For out of it was thou taken. For dust thou art. And unto dust thou shalt return. That's why there's groaning in the present hour. We we'll call it farming. We we'll call it recession. We we'll call it scarcity. We we'll call it poverty. We we'll call it injustice. We we'll call it human condition. We we'll call it unpredictable disaster. Everything we're we'll groaning because of the agony of the present groaning. Number three, the assistance of the Holy Spirit. The assistance of of the Holy Spirit. He said, through it all, in it all, because we're children of God, He helps us. He helps us. Look at this. We're looking at Romans chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we shall pray for, as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And because he's making intercession for us, that's why we're confident. And because we have the assistance of the Holy Ghost, that's why we know that in verse 28, all things work together for good. To them that love God, and to them what he called according to his purpose. He says, because I know God has called me. Called me into salvation. He has called me into holiness. He has called me into service. He has called me into the kingdom. And now I can tell God will not leave me alone. God will not leave you alone. He will not forsake you. He will not abandon you. Anything that comes in your life, everything will work together for good in Jesus' name. He will assist you. It will help you. Look at how the amen is, you know, going down. Yeah. And everything that wants to hinder your progress, he will destroy in Jesus' name. Yeah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9, But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them that love him. I love him. I said I love him. I said I love him. Because you love him, what you have never thought of this year, he'll give. What you never dreamt, where you never dreamt you will be, you will be there in Jesus' name. Every negative thing will work together for good in your life. You'll be a dreamer. You'll be a climber. You'll be a conqueror. See the dreamer coming. Let us seize him. Let us kill him. Ah, don't kill him. Let us sell him. And then we'll see what will become of his dream. But that man loved God. You will love God more. That man was called of God. The Lord has called you. They held him. They sold him. And they sold him to Egypt. All things work together for good. To them that love God. And to those who are the called according to his purpose. It was in Potiphar's house. He loved God. He was doing well. He was doing everything else to do with his sincere heart. And then you know the story. They told a big lie against him. He couldn't get a lawyer to defend him. He couldn't get a friend to defend him. They threw him into the prison. 
all things work together for good. In your life, everything will work together for good. They're cheating me. They're oppressing me. They're telling lies against me. Wait, everything will turn to your good. They suspect me that I am bad, but I know my heart. I'm a child of God. I'm good. Don't worry. It's just a matter of time. You will rule over your problems. You rule over those enemies. And eventually he told that those two people that had dreams, start interpreting dream for them. Who am I talking about? I said, who am I talking about? He said, they stole me from my father's house. He didn't tell the whole story. And now I'm here. He said, you are going back to the king. Remember me when it's good for you. And then the man got there and forgot him. Don't worry. They forget you. All things will work together for you. And then Pharaoh had a dream. And there was no interpreter in the whole nation. A situation will come that you will be the only one that has the key in your hand. And you have the solution in your hand. And the man said, I remember my fault this day. There's a man in the prison. Bring him, bring him, bring him here. And they brought him and God put the word in his mouth. He'll put the word in your mouth. The word that will bring solution to them and the word that will bring fulfillment of the dream into your life. And Pharaoh said, can we find another man better than this who has the Spirit of God? The Spirit of God indwells him. And he became next to the king of the land. And here comes Reuben and Judah and Simeon and Issachar and the rest of them. And they came to the land. When he saw them, he knew them. They didn't know him, but he knew them. And he knew my dream has come to pass. They lied down, they bent down, they, they let low before him as the dream had said. And he said, who are you? What he said, we are the children of the same father. How many of you? We were 12. Now we are 10 here. One is at home, but one is not. One is not. They think it was not. Ah, you are still alive. You will remain alive. All those people that said, we've gotten rid of him. We have rubbished his life. We have killed his dream. They don't know God's purpose in your life. And God's purpose in your life will be fulfilled in Jesus' name. Eventually, it's a long story. He revealed himself to them. He said, I am Joseph, your brother. It was like the earth should open and should be swallowed up. He said, don't feel guilty. You didn't send me here. God sent me here to preserve life. Don't give up. A glorious day is coming for you. Don't give up. The day of fulfillment is coming in your life. I has not seen. He has not heard. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. All the blessings you need, the Lord will provide in your life. We come to point number three. The faithfulness and virtue of inseparable saints. The faithfulness and virtue of inseparable saints. There are three things here from verse 31 to verse 39. Number one, the constant compassion of our interceding captain. The constant compassion 
of our interceding captain. We're looking at Romans chapter 8 and verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? God is for you. I said God is for you. Anybody that tries to say it's against you, is wasting his time, you are blessed already, and nobody can reverse it in Jesus' name. He that spared his own son, but delivered him all for us all, how shall he not with him freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God, God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also, tell me, who also, tell me out aloud, maketh intercession for us. God is for you. I didn't hear my people. God is for you. Isaiah chapter 57. Isaiah chapter 57. Sorry, chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and the righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Christ is interceding for you. Number two, the compelling consecration of inseparable concourse. The compelling consecration of inseparable uh, concourse. We're looking at uh, Romans chapter 8. And we're reading from verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Make it personal. Who shall separate me from the love of God shall tribulation answer or distress answer or persecution answer or farming answer or nakedness answer or peril answer or sword answer as it is written for thy sake are we killed all the day long and we are counted as sheep for the slaughter nay in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. You are going to read that for yourself. Make it personal. Nay! Yes. Let's sit and hear now. Yes. Let your enemies hear. Yes. Let all those spirits in the sky, let them hear. In all these things, I am more than a conqueror through him that loved me. Say it for yourself. Can you say that again? Don't cry before the devil, you are a conqueror. Don't cry before any enemy, you are a conqueror. Don't let it ever cross your mind that they have come. They will catch me. They will destroy me. No, they cannot. They will not. You are more than a conqueror through him that loved you. You have overcome. You have won the victory. You have won the day. Nothing will bring you down in Jesus' name. Look at the third part here. The consummate commitment of invincible champions. The consummate commitment of invincible champions. Not invisible, but invincible. Actually, that's what means means unconquerable. The consummate commitment of invincible champions. Are there champions in the house today? The Lord has made you a champion. I can't hear their amen. Look at verse 38. For I am persuaded. I am persuaded. 
somebody there i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities no powers, no things present, no things to come, no height, no depth, no any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I am persuaded. I am persuaded. I am persuaded with new strength you are taking your journey with new assurance you are taking your journey you are rising up from the seat of weakness now you are strong and nobody can stop you in the way the conquerors are rising up the champions are rising up and we are moving throughout this land everywhere Nothing will stop you in the way. You will not be weak. You will be strong. And with any temptation or trial, God will make a way of escape. And you will escape in Jesus' name. Rise up and receive more of that strength. More of that power. More of that anointing. More of that glory upon your life. And be fully persuaded today that neither depth nor height be fully persuaded today that neither angels nor principalities or powers will be able to separate you from the love of God which we have in Christ Jesus. He's able to keep you to the uttermost and He will. He has called you a Christian. He has called you a conqueror. He has called you be a champion. 